not Christian or Jew or Muslim, not Hindu, Buddhist, Sufi, or Zen, not any religion or cultural system. I am not from the East or the West, not out of the ocean or up from the ground, not natural or ethereal. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Welcome to our art conversation. So the um, music I play and the song we're singing was from uh, Jalal al-Din Rumi, kind of relevant to today's discussion, which we're gonna discuss it later on. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce our today guest, Leslie Tejada. Uh, she's a great artist who work with different media and when I was searching for her work, I came across several press and articles that describe her work, um, such as the one by Mariana Walker in Santa Barbara um, News Press, in which um, she, described, um, she described her work as um, like separating room in one house that she create different type of painting, which each is a representation of the sacred life. Or um, a review in Chicago Art Magazine by Kristen Hagen described Leslie as an artist that she has an incredible ability to evoke nature through details. So all of this making me even more eager to hear and to have this conversation with Leslie. Um, without further ado, let us start our conversation uh, with Leslie to find out who she is and how she started as an artist. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you. Glad to be here. So please, Leslie, please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and how you started as an artist. How I started. Um, well, I grew up in Los Angeles um, for the first few years. Um, always making things, always in my bedroom making things. Um, I loved making um, uh, doll clothes and things out of uh, Christmas cards and cloth and things like that. And uh, there wasn't any real artist um, sensitivity in my family. So I didn't have my, a thought about myself as an artist. Um, and then later I went to high school up in the Bay Area. It was a wonderful high school and they had a wonderful art program um, two full-time art teachers and I, I learned everything, you know, how to draw from a model, how to do oil paint calligraphy. It was four years of a lot of experience. So I went away to college <clears throat> and was an art major, but that was the 60s. So it was much more exciting to try to explore who you are rather than what you want to do. Um, and so, um, as far as my background in art, I kind of did a little side trip there for a number of years. Um, I'm giving this all to you in a nutshell. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, eventually, um, you know, dropped out, um, lived in a teepee, making things for the uh, crafts and art shows and uh, eventually getting married, having two kids and then coming back to art it, as, as painting. I was always um, doing something and I'd like to put a little plug in for the housewife arts or rather the home arts, making quilts, um, learning to cook, um, all that, it goes into an artistic sensibility and I was doing that. And then I got back into art about 1980 or so. Okay, uh, so you told me um, you moved from California to um, Oregon, right? Um, did, you work, did your work change 
Did you find your life as an artist bar in Oregon? Did you find more interest or more audience for your work? Um, probably, uh, no, not in Oregon. Um, I, <laughs> I want to go back a little bit to um, before I moved to Oregon in that uh, when I got back into art, I did a number of classes from the city college, from the College of um, Creative Studies at UCSB. And I really studied, drew from the figure and got really grounded in sort of the, the history of art, the art, art world. And um, it took a while after that for me to find my own voice. And that um, after all that, I had all these ideas of art and what I wanted to paint, I didn't know. And so one day, um, I, I had a wonderful new studio up in the mountains of Santa Barbara. I had a beautiful view of the islands. It was very inspiring. Um, I just thought, I really felt frustrated. And I said to myself, why am I doing this? You know, what do I want to see? So, um, I didn't have very much money, we were quite poor. And so I got the backs of tablets and some house paint and spray paint and a palette knife. And I just started experimenting. And I found that by going beyond my conscious idea, do I wanna paint this, do I wanna paint this or that? Um, I, it, it all opened up in response to the materials. So that went on in Santa Barbara and that was uh, 20 years, um, you know, or more. I, um, I eventually got bigger, worked in different kinds of media, and I came out with my erosion paintings, which were um, really the most popular I've done and were the most successful. So I did the first ones in Santa Barbara. And it was shortly after that I got my, well, at that time I had a, a good gallery then in Chicago. And after that time, it started opening up and that's when I moved to Oregon. So a lot of uh, like that, that painting you're showing, one of my uh, erosion paintings, that was painted actually in Oregon. Um, but uh, I think being in Oregon um, influenced me because of the, the just verdant growth. You know, you walk through the forest, there's every little square inch has, you know, moss, lichen, little plants, mushrooms. And all that detail, I think, was translated, although not, not consciously. I didn't set out to, um, in, a, in a concept, to, to capture what I saw. But I think the sensibility is there in the details. And people have said, oh, they look like um, forests. Um, and these paintings were different layers. They're thin layers of Elkid. There's some underpainting, which is some of the more colorful parts um, in the middle of pomegranate. But <clears throat> I did many thin layers of Elkid and letting the sort of the image come through. But people said, well, it's like a forest. And um, I had already started them in Santa Barbara, but I was always attracted to the north and the forest here. So, you know. Is, it, is this the type of work you did from beginning? Has your work changed over the time? Yes, all the time. Um, I noticed you had a picture there of one of my... Um, this one. That one. I put that there because um, that I was painting uh, from life and I thought I was going to end up being a portrait painter. And I got to the point where I didn't have any backgrounds. I, I wasn't interested in the backgrounds. I was interested in the figure. And it's because I think the autobiographical um, nature of art is that you're always painting what you need to see. And I was trying to find out who I was, who, who am I? And at this point, like this portrait of Patty, I decided to go out in the woods and uh, set up my easel and you know, start doing surroundings. This is this one that you're just showing wayfaring. That's yeah. one of the ones to skip ahead a little. That was one of the ones that I did in my studio with the black paint and, and trying to find my voice. Um, so, uh, 
anyway, what we can just go from here then. That's, that's one of the ones I did then. And then eventually got to the erosion paintings. So this is, this is after a portrait, you, you notice you, you are not portrait painter and you have to do something else, right? Yeah, and this is not 98, it's actually 88, I must have put. Okay. No, I'm not. <clears throat> but I, um, I really loved doing the figure at that time. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I haven't done them since, so. And then you came to um, this type of painting. Yeah. And the threshold paintings, you've got one up there now. Um, that was done around the same time as the erosion paintings with some of the same techniques, but the idea, and this is where you bring in the idea of the Sufis that you, the music you had in the beginning, is um, it, I was very interested in um, Middle Eastern art, but also the Sufi poets, uh, particularly Rumi and Hafiz. And um, they talk about meeting the beloved or one's higher self or God, whichever way you want to see it, in a garden. I actually did an in the garden series also at one time. And, but I, these thresholds, there's a, you're at the threshold of a sacred space and there's veils over where you will meet the beloved. That was the idea behind those. Yeah, so this is um, like, you know, since you talk about um, Sufi, I'm going to jump into uh, that and then we come back to see different um, uh, categories of your painting. In your website, this is like Leslie website, we see it right now. And then you have huge selection. Uh, which of these categories is um, based on like the Sufi and um, those idea of Sufism? Um, I don't work from ideas so much as that they inspire me on an inward search. That is in all my work. Um, you could see what you've got up on the screen, that one in the lower right hand town is a very small painting. You can see more Middle Eastern effects. Um, but my interest, not only in the Sufis, but um, in Middle Eastern art was uh, from the erosion paintings, the next group that I did were these uh, magic carpets. Okay. And they evolved because um, I was doing very well with the erosions, but I, I just burned out. Um, I ran out of ideas. I pushed the media and how I was working as far as it could go. And I was more interested in trying acrylic, something that dried faster. Uh, these are the erosion paintings you're showing. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, so I had developed frozen shoulder and had to do some things that were smaller. And that got me more into uh, a decorative idea. So the magic carpets were done after that. And I had the idea of what would happen if I, if I uh, wove paint, what would happen if I dripped it one way and then turned the painting and dripped it the other way. And these evolved from that. Mm -hmm. um, and there uh, are let me just um, uh, interrupt before uh, we go um, into magic carpet and then. <laughs> Um, I have to uh, just clarify a few terms, um, like, you know, Sufi are the people Hello. who, hi Scarlett, my daughter here. And, um, Sufis are uh, the people who practice Sufism. So I write it here for the one who want to do a little bit more research. So Sufism, it's um, a mystical group of Muslim, which is, uh, they believed and practice, uh, which Muslim who seek truth, truth, of the one love, wisdom, and um, knowledge through direct response and experience, direct experience of God, right? And another term for Sufi is Darvish. Darvish, which I wrote it here, means poor man. It's a Persian title for um, Sufi. They call them Darvish, means poor man. And they have a particular place to practice, um, uh, kind of like a temple. They call it Khanga, as, I, as um, you can see. I wrote down here the term Khanga, as they themselves describe this place. It's a place for a spiritual retreat and character reformation. This is how Sufi describe this um, place of worship for themselves. So um, that's like, you know, one of the most famous of those Sufi poet was um, uh, Rumi, which um, um, 
Leslie also mentioned it. And she was a, a um, 13th century Persian poet and he wrote in different, sorry, he, and he wrote in different languages, Persian, Turkish, Urdu, <laughs> writing poem in all these language, uh, languages. Um, all right, sorry, I just thought, you know, before we go further, it would be good to clarify all this stuff. Okay, go ahead with your uh, magical carpet and then how you came about all this magical carpet. Uh uh, I just wove the paint more or less by moving the um, moving the canvas, and eventually uh, it, it it they kind of um, evolved into uh, things that actually look like carpets. They have texture and everything. They were really fun to do. But I'd like to add something about the Sufis. Is that yes, my yes. my study of Sufism is that it's the mystical side of Islam in that it's an inward path. Yes, it's a mystical group of, yeah. uh, so, group of Muslims. So that's that's how I've always worked. I've always tried to um, I've tried to access uh, the part of myself that's more from the heart, and what I want to paint from there rather than a concept or anything. So that's that's part of my whole um, approach or process too. So, yeah. Um, you have another um, categories in your um, uh, in your website. It said Herat. Right. They came. They actually came next because I started uh, working with acrylic, and I was very excited because it dried and it was, you know, faster. And you could also use collage. So the painting I have behind me and the one you have on the screen now, Arabian Nights, it is made from acrylic, and it has a collage of. Um, pieces of paper that were cut up, cut up uh, swirls of actual photographs of Persian carpets oh. um, and, and a lot of other things. And the word hairat, you, you as Persian, you found the better perhaps definition, but it's a, a, a state of enchantment. Yeah. And I felt like these are a place that you enter in like a, a state of enchantment. Whereas with my erosion paintings, they were sort of grounded, it had a sense of place or horizon. These, you, you, you go in and it's a state of enchantment. Yes, um, Herat, um, I'm also writing, down, uh, writing um, down the Herat as a term here. Herat means um, something, uh, when you see something and you say, wow, you know, it's, I mean, surprise. That means you, uh, that means astonishment. So the word for this wow, in, in uh, Urdu and Persian, they call it Herat or Herat and Giz. So something is Herat and Giz means it's vow, you know, and mm -hmm. you see it and you're surprised. So that's Herat. So which, uh, um, Leslie used one of her categories. And it is vow, right? When you see this work of Leslie here and other work, um, like, you know, in these categories, you have that um, sense of like, you know, vow thing. Um, in this um, work. Let me just um, go back to her website. And um, uh, yeah, my um, computer um, somehow today um, not uh, cooperating. Have some technical issue, I guess. Maybe I should start talking about the next group because <laughs> of the time. While you're waiting for your computer for in? Yes, yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, let me, yeah, okay. Thank from this, I went to the cosms. Um, and the cosm paintings are also acrylic. Um, I started, I wanted to work in terms of uh, what would this acrylic paint do? And I wanted to pool it and play around with it. So I started working on wood, that's one. Um, and um, to see what I could do with the paint. And again, it has this kind of sense of all over engulfment in them too. So I have a series of these and these were all done in Oregon. Um, and uh, I just stopped doing them a, a, two, a couple of years ago, you know, so I have several of these. Um, I like to work in terms of what the material will do. I'll get a new format, a new media, a new ground and an experiment to see what exactly it'll do because I like to work through discovery. 
So I will see something new and not just uh, illustrate something I already knew before. I'm sort of in it for the fun for myself, for this discovering of beauty. Um, is there a connection between the material you choose to use, your style, uh, this, uh, your stylic, you know, uh, style you use, and the subject matter, uh, the subject you use for your work? Well, this is the thing. I, I can't speak in terms of a subject. Um, like the one you're showing, Nam Parai, um, it, uh, I was just experimenting. I put down a texture. I make my own uh, linoleum blocks. And uh, then I press sometimes a texture first or just with paint. And then I started pooling things and trying things, uh, blowing things adding these, I've added little dots and things. So it, there wasn't really a subject as far as the um, central idea of why I did it. It was an experimentation. That's what these have been. That's kind of how I evolved all of my work. You know. All right. Uh, I mean, all of them are beautiful, no matter like, you know, how you choose the subject or material or a style. Right. Is there any artist inspired you through your book? Oh, many, many, many over the years, you know. Um, I've always studying. I, I wrote some down. I thought, well, maybe Farin will ask me. And it's all the way from someone like Monet, Bonnard. I like uh, Friedrich and then uh, Kandinsky, Gorky, Rothko. Um, Pousset Dart, Alice, uh, not Alice Neal, Agnes Martin. Uh, so, and even up to Ross Fleckner, who's a New York painter who's alive today. Uh, I, I love their works. I get books by their work or from the library, study, go to museums. I've been to New York and seen art in other, other cities and in Europe. And um, there's so much. Now this painting that you just put in, this is, a, this is the newest thing is uh, in the last year. What is really interesting is that with the Cosm paintings and the hierarch, I had felt like I'd stepped behind the veils of the threshold and the um, erosion paintings. And I was, you know, in this sort of non-formed place. And, um, but since that time, I've re in, uh, reinstated the horizon. And um, there's a painting in there you'll see that's an inscape um, mm -hmm. that actually came before these. Um, that one, that's the one I had in the show at, at Nawa. Um, and I feel like, I feel like I'm landing again. I feel like there's more of a sense of place. And I really thought about it and I thought, well, the heart can rest. And uh, I'm getting a good response locally. The people here in Oregon, are, there's not a tradition really of any abstraction. So I'm kind of having fun doing things that are more, uh, I can share with this community. So those, uh, what you're looking at were experiments with watercolor and uh, some acrylic on wood, wood panel. So those. Yeah, so you do some landscape painting as well, right? In, uh... Yeah, but there are, again, experiments. So what'll happen if I pour this? What'll happen if I do this? And I'll put in a horizon. So they are landscapes, yeah, I think. And see, since you mentioned about people reaction, um, what's overall people reaction to your work? It, what is the what? The... Uh, people reaction to your work, because you mentioned about local people, so. Um... Um... I did these small things, the little ones you've been showing, they're very, very small, that's six by eight inch. Um, and uh, I was part of an open studio tour last year. And <clears throat> it was a wonderful term turnout, wonderful people. I sold a lot of work. So that's really gratifying, you know, to be part of the local community that way. Before I was doing those other paintings are all very large, I sold in galleries in big cities for people with big houses or offices and that kind of thing. Um, meet some of the, uh, those people, you know, at, uh, at gallery openings. Um, uh, so um, what you're doing today in this situation of um, 
social distancing. I'm sure like, you know, you got more opportunity for pain, right? Um, and what do what you think an artist can do? Um, it's not so much different for me because I live kind of reclusively and I'm not terribly social. So I do have more time to paint, but on the other hand, um, I'm painting smaller. Uh, I don't know if this is just a hiatus or if I'm gonna go back to bigger work. I really don't know at this time. I'm having fun with the small ones. Um, I don't know if my life is so, my artistic life is so uh, influenced by the COVID you know, virus, but it, I don't have the places to show. We're not gonna have our open house and I'm, there's various things that are closed down and that influences me. Yeah. So, um, what do you think an artist can, can do in this situation? Or um, do you have any, um, like, you know, suggestion for the artists like yourself, uh, which they are, like, you know, um, in, during this pandemic or overall? Always follow your heart <laughs> um, in everything in life. But as far as art, go towards what you love use the colors that you love, follow this, you know, you need to have, uh, yes, you need to have training, you need to have discipline, there's various things you need in the studio, but it's a heartfelt uh, activity, we're very, very fortunate that we do have this kind of activity, uh, so central in our lives, where we don't have to be analyzing and constantly using that part of our mind, um, that we can find out more about what we're about, what's in our heart, share it with other people. You know, so, I, I kind of resonate with what uh, Zara said uh, last week, is that it's all about love. I really like what she said. Yeah, exactly. This is about art, right? Art, when you're making art, you have to be in love with that art and you have to actually uh, love it in order to be able to make it, to create it, right? As I think this is about all artists. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just do it because you have to do it. <laughs> you have to want it to do and love it to do. Mm -hmm. So, okay, lastly, do you have any final word for our guest today? i just like to thank uh, the National Association of Women Artists. I think it's a wonderful group of women. I feel very privileged and grateful to be part of it. They're my sisters. If I lived in New York, I would be... Um, volunteering and helping out. So I'm, I'm just, uh, thank you for this opportunity to share my work. Thank you, for, um, thank you, Leslie. And this is, um, uh, this conclude our today conversation with um, Leslie. And um, as usual, I have her information here. And if you want to reach out to Leslie, you can check her website, by the way, her website is beautiful, he has, she has huge, like, you know, categories of different type of art. And as that artist said, her artworks are like separating rooms. And that's exactly um, Leslie's artwork art. So you can reach out through her um, website or you can use this email address as you can see it here. And if you have any questions, suggestions for us, you can always email us at office at And don't forget to add subject and in subject and in, uh, in subject line, uh, art conversation with Farid. I apologize for this technical problem and also my DAR jump in. So it distracts me kind of. And I hope to see you again next week with another talented artist. Stay safe and be strong. Love you all. Bye. Thank you.